Literature gives us the opportunity to experience lives, perspectives, and worlds different from our own. Though remember, friend, a good story has many readings, and this is but one. You're asleep in your first-class cabin on the Orient Express, when suddenly you're awoken by a scream from the room next door. Concerned, you get out of bed and look into the hall. You see a train conductor is already at your neighbor's door, and you hear a voice from inside say in French that everything is fine. But when you get up the next morning, you learn two things. The man in the cabin was stabbed 12 times, and the train is now stuck in heavy snow, so you and the other passengers are trapped inside with the murderer. Unless you can solve the crime in Agatha Christie's Murder on the Orient Express. Haven't a clue? Well, you can't very well solve the murder if you don't have all the facts. So put on your detective hat, Zoe. We'll take the case without spoiling the ending. This whodunit is brought to you by Adam and Eve. I know, I was shocked too. Use code credits for 50% off one item and free shipping in the US and Canada. More about that after the episode. So you haven't read Murder on the Orient Express by the queen of mystery, Agatha Christie. Oh, <laughs> you've gotta check this one out. Christie is the third best-selling author of all time, just behind the Bible and Shakespeare. And this is one of her most famous detective stories. It also features one of her best-loved characters, Belgian detective Hercule Poirot, doing what he does best, solving mysteries and talking down to his friends. Christie wrote 33 Poirot mysteries from 1920 to 1975, as well as another 42 novels, mostly detective stories. Murder on the Orient Express was published in 1934 to both critical and popular acclaim, and has gone on to be adapted for both stage and screen. Its claustrophobic atmosphere and seemingly unsolvable mystery has led to it becoming one of the most iconic works of detective fiction of all time. So, with that said, all aboard for murder. You are Hercule Poirot, famed Belgian detective. A murder was committed on this train last night, and since the locomotive is going to be stuck in the snow for a few days, your good friend and fellow passenger, Monsieur Bouc, the owner of this rail line, has asked you to solve the case. Here's what you know. American millionaire Samuel Ratchet had approached you the night before to ask for your protection since he'd been receiving death threats, though you turned him down because you, and I quote, didn't like his face. The next morning, Ratchet is dead with 12 stab wounds. A physician who happened to be on the train, Dr. Constantine, stop it Zoe, no spoilers, determines that Ratchet died around the time you heard the scream from his cabin. Furthermore, he may have been stabbed by two assailants, as there's evidence of both left and right-handed inflicted wounds. Okay, so you know the murder weapon and the location. Now for the suspects. Because the first class cabin was locked, and there's currently no evidence that the killer left the train, it must be one of the 13 other people in that car. The suspects include an elderly Russian princess and her German maid, the dead man's secretary and valet, cut it out, Zoe, a governess and military man returning from Baghdad, a Hungarian count and countess, knock it off, and also five other equally suspicious subjects. Zoe, please, enough, they can't all be guilty. And then there's the evidence at the crime scene, a handkerchief with the initial H embroidered on it, a watch stopped at 1.15, and the remains of a burnt letter. You use your investigative skills to tease out part of that burnt letter, which reads, Remember little Daisy Armstrong. Aha! You recall that, some years past, a man named LaFranco Cassetti kidnapped a child by that name. He collected the ransom, but killed the child anyway. This led to the death of both of her parents as well as her nurse, and Cassetti famously used his money to get off scot-free. So surely this dead man is actually none other than the kidnapper Cassetti. See, you knew you didn't like his face. Hmm, but maybe one of the passengers has a connection to the Armstrong case. <laughs> the plot thickens and makes reference to a real-life crime. Murder on the Orient Express was partially inspired by the tragic 1932 kidnapping and murder of the Lindsbergs baby. Agatha Christie frequently drew inspiration for her stories from current events. In fact, when Christie sat down to create her first Poirot novel during World War I, Germany was occupying Belgium. And since part of the reason England entered the war was to free Belgium, it was considered patriotic to celebrate the country. Thus Poirot was written as a Belgian detective. Christie also drew inspiration from over a century of detective fiction. In fact, in Jess Nevin's Encyclopedia of Fantastic Victoriana, he points out that while Edgar Allan Poe's famous C. Auguste Dupin mysteries were the immediate antecedent to most great detective fiction, including Sherlock Holmes and Poirot, Poe himself had synthesized over a century's worth of crime and investigation stories. But what set Christie apart from her peers was her mastery of plotting and characterization, as well as her well-honed instinct about what her readers enjoyed reading. 
Her stories continue to be popular to this day, and her influence can be seen on everything from modern detective stories, to hit mystery films, to board games, and of course, to TV's many long-running crime dramas. You might even say that we can find evidence of Agatha Christie everywhere, including a snow-trapped scene of a crime. Back on the train, you're finding a bunch of new evidence from interviewing the suspects. Based on your deductions about the personalities involved, you treat some of them brusquely, and others with kid gloves. And your friends Monsieur Book and Dr. Constantine are amazed at your ability to get additional clues from the suspects, while also being amazingly patient with you as you talk down to them every time they fail to see the case as clearly as you do. Yeah, great investigator, not so great person. You learn from the American detective that the victim had told him that he was being stalked by a small man with a womanly voice, and from other witnesses that such a man might have been on the train that night, disguised as a train conductor, or perhaps wearing a red kimono-like nightgown. But you realize such a man couldn't have escaped the train since there are no footprints in the snow, nor could he have escaped to a different part of the train. You also find out that a talkative American suspect, Mrs. Hubbard, believes the killer escaped the murder scene through her room, a claim that seems impossible until the murder weapon is discovered hidden in a bag in her cabin, and the killer proves they're still on board by hiding that red nightgown in your suitcase. Every solution to the crime seems impossible, and every suspect you know has an alibi. <sighs> Perhaps this murderer has pulled off the perfect crime. You sit in silence, letting the little gray cells in your brain sort their way through all of the evidence, until suddenly, you have it. You gather all of the suspects into the dining car and reveal the solution to this murder mystery, which is something you're going to have to discover for yourself when you read Murder on the Orient Express, because we've left out a ton of clues, plot points, and character developments. So before anyone spoils the ending, I'm looking at you, Cat. You owe it to yourself to hustle down to your local library and check out a copy of Murder on the Orient Express. And after reading it, I think you'll agree that the reason for its popularity is no mystery at all. Though if you'd like a little more mystery in other aspects of your life, the folks over at Adam and Eve have got you covered. Ah, come on, like you didn't know cartoons on the internet could be sex positive. I've seen your search history. But in all seriousness, with 90-day hassle-free returns, discreet shipping, and with 20% of their profits going to help fight the spread of HIV around the world, with Adam and Eve, you can feel good about feeling good. Once again, that's code credits at checkout at adamandeve.com for 50% off one item and free shipping in the U.S. and Canada. Some exclusions apply, but that's okay. To each their own. Thank you so much to Joseph Blame, Dominic Valenciana, Casey Muscha, Arcolite Games, Angelo Valenciana, Alicia Bramble, and Ahmed Zia Turk for being fantastic legendary patrons. 